I did this thing a little while ago. Um, it, was, it was nothing to do with the telly show. And what it was, was Ian Lang was in charge of the DTI. And he had this idea to privatise the post office. And what he did, he was going to put out the business mail to competitive tender. Now, the business mail is all the stuff that's, that subsidises the standard rate of a stamp. It's the junk mail. So if you lose that, you don't pay 26p for a first-class stamp, you pay mileage. So you might have to pay five quid to send a letter in Britain. And in my little way, I just thought, no. <laughs> that shall not be. <laughs> and so I actually managed to get hold of Ian Lang's home address. <laughs> so I put it on the internet. <laughs> and you know all the free post forms in newspapers and magazines? <laughs> all you have to do... Fill them out with his name and address, sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> and people joined in big on this one. They really went for it. Like, people were writing in and just sort of leaving emails going, I've just sent a hundred things off to Ian Lang. <laughs> and I've sent off kind of like Benetton sweater catalogue, Stanner chairlift, holiday in Greece. <laughs> and it's just, somebody actually said to me, I've just sent Ian Lang a speak Afrikaans linguaphone tape. <laughs> My brother-in-law, who's a very timid teacher, just came up to me and went, I've just sent Ian Lang a garden hedge trimmer on 10-day trial. <laughs> and then we bumped into, someone I know, bumped into um, this bloke who works for BBC, and they said, um, said, oh, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm working with Mark. Someone said, oh, really? I know him. I said, oh, really? Why is that? He said, I used to work at Ian Lang's office. <laughs> we know about him. Mm. <laughs> And it explained what had happened. And the friend said, well, what, what happened then? How, how bad was it? He said, well, imagine if you can. <laughs> Day one in the Lang household. <laughs> the sun is rising, the birds are singing, toast is browning. <laughs> and in the distance, the sound of a post office truck is heard. <laughs> Six bags on day one. <laughs> Six bags on day one. And in the middle of that is his community charge bill. <laughs> Lang went along to the post office, um, and they obviously didn't like him very much at that time, the post office <laughs> workers. And he said, look, I'm a victim of a cruel hoax. I am being pranked in this evil, vile way. I'm a victim, and we must stop this. We must put us a six, six bags every day. Stop it now. It must be stopped. Do you understand? And I imagine they took great delight in saying, can't interfere with the Queen's Royal Mail, sir. <laughs> Anyway, tonight's show, tonight's show. There's, there's several things in tonight's show. Um, the first one I want to talk about is, is um, a place called Menworth Hill. Menworth Hill is a US listening base in Britain. It's in Yorkshire. It's enormous. It's a place with a great big golf balls. It's, just, it's like giant Tarby has found his pitch and putt. <laughs> you know. And it's an enormous place. It was set up in the 50s to spy on the Russians. Now, now that the Cold War's over, there should be no need for it. However, it's not shutting down. It's actually expanding. And the bulk of the work that they do is commercial spying on Europe, European companies, and on individuals, you know, people who have anti-American interests, like anyone who doesn't eat at McDonald's. <laughs> you know, so it's that kind of... They, you know, they've got the ability to tap into 100,000 phone lines at any moment. And it's a really scary, spooky place. And we thought, right, we want to play. <laughs> we want to play with Menworth Hill, because it's officially RAF Menworth. Right, it's a British MOD site with a, an American base in the middle of it. And we thought, right, they've got to have a lease. They've got to have a lease, haven't they? And at some point, that lease has got to run out. Wouldn't it be great if we could get the details when the lease ran out on RAF Menworth and the listening base? We'll just roll up there... Camera crew, couple of bailiffs, notice to quit. <laughs> right, you, take the Cadillac and fuck off home. <laughs> and we, so we phoned up the MOD and said, is there a lease? And they said, oh, no, no, well, yeah, well, you see, no, it's not as simple as that. Um, it was either, there was a lease, yeah, there was, well, the, well I say, the, there's been a, we've lost it. <laughs> you've lost it it's a fucking lease to an enormous ministry of defence site and you've lo look in the file you keep your passport and birth certificate in <laughs> go to the drawer with the little fuses light bulbs and spare bits of fucking wire it's in there under the blue tack have a look 
They, no, well, it wasn't really. It was at least of ten years, so it doesn't matter. Go away. And we actually found out. I was talking to a bloke who knows, and we're looking at a map, and he goes, oh, that's interesting. I said, what? He said, there. He said, hmm. <laughs> Menworth Hill. I said, yeah. He said, there's no flight restrictions over it. <laughs> I said, none whatsoever. No, we're allowed to fly over it. I said, in a hot air balloon. <laughs> He said, yeah, if you like. <laughs> so basically we thought, right, what we're going to do is because the thing that they hate is publicity, right, let's organise a balloon tour service <laughs> and get as many people up and over Menworth Hill as we can. I had a quick feel of that material. Oh, good, yeah, so it's it. I felt like it could go. <laughs> well, we've got interesting going over it, having a look, see what happens. Oh, that's uh... the inaugural flight of the Menworth Hill <laughs> ballooning <laughs> experience. Quite right. Show you Menworth Hill. It's a U.S. listening base. It's on uh, British soil. It's officially RAF Menworth. It's um, basically what's run out of there is a listening station. It's called the Big Ear, and um, it's run by the NSA. Um, the staff there is enormous. They have something like nearly 2,000 members of staff there. In fact, I think it might be more than than MI5, but MI5 aren't giving us their staffing details right at this moment, so I can't verify that. This was set up in the 50s to share information about spying and, and what was going on and, you know, how to poison Cuban cigars and all that kind of thing, poisoned umbrellas, all that kind of stuff. But now, what you've got here is the Cold War's over and you have basically a commercial operation. People are listening into um, economic information, commercial in information, eavesdropping on companies all over Europe, eavesdropping on individuals. Um, tracking uh, people who they would consider dissident subversives and it works on key words so if I had a telephone now was sort of rattling away going oh Colonel Gaddafi, uh, Semtex, uh, Libya, number 10 Downing Street, Jerry Adams, uh, Peter Mandelson, uh, AK-47 and all that kind of stuff then they'd probably be listening or they might even be listening now hello mum mum yeah it's Mark uh, Colonel Gaddafi Semtex, AK-47, Hezbollah, Martin McGuinness, Jerry Adams, the UDF, the UVA, Swampy, Peace Protesters, Delia Smith, Shipment of Arms, British Aerospace, Nuclear Fuels. No, I'm not smoking, Mum, it's a balloon. I swear, I'm not smoking. Big bird, big bird retrieved, you read over. These are the white balls of deception. As I believe Will Carling is referred to. Do you realise if you dropped a sixpence from this height, you'd kill somebody? It's almost like the Millennium Dome had a, had a litter. Isn't it? Domelets. Guys, with these uh, slack winds, we're running a bit low on gas, so uh, we we'll want to be looking for a landing site in the next five minutes. Okay. What we'll do is just get over this uh, 
this side and then um, yeah. we'll see how it goes. Oh shit. She's <laughs> lovely <laughs> for We're running out of fuel. We're going RAF over RAF Memoir. And we're looking for a landing site. Oh hello, there's a helicopter. Oh fuck it. This is all going this is all going horribly wrong. Oh my god, they've got their own petrol station, look, it's like a little village. Oh they're videoing us. That's amazing, isn't it? They just they just can't stop spying, can they? <laughs> Oh my god. This is all a tad more scary than I thought it would be, to be honest. Oh, fuck. They're filming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think the tour was worth it, even though we bumped into the farmer's wall. <laughs> Hello there, Mark Hello. Thomas, Channel 4, how are you? Not bad. All right, what's your name? Rob Jessman. Hello, Rob. Look, this is what we're doing. We're doing balloon tours over Menworth Hill, showing people the glory of Yorkshire and also the US listening base, you see. <laughs> i tell you what, could, you, could I ask you a favour? No, it depends. Can, can you put some of these up in the mess? Certainly not. <laughs> well, no, because, I mean, I'll give them to the American, because I'm not sure who it belongs to, whether it's British or American. Thomas, yeah. yeah. Listen, Mark, good guy, go, right? So yeah. phone number you get. Here. No, I can give you a phone number. Do In fact, they'll I, probably know the phone number. Honestly, if you, if you have a chat with that lot over there, I think they'll be able to tell you. We have bylaws in place at Manworth Hill. Right. And it may be illegal for you to fly over. Right. What's on? Uh, I think it is. You, you, you think it's illegal to fly no, over? No, no, I think it's legal to fly over. Well, we think it may be illegal to fly over. Really? What I'm saying is... Am I getting teacher? arrested? The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who actually owns it? Who's in charge of it? Oh, I can't make any more comment. But I mean, it's, 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 is it British or it's American? It's Minister Defence Property. But I mean, it's American base, isn't it? It's Minister Defence Property. It's RAF Memorial. But it is an American base, isn't yeah, it? No, no, no. We'll leave you to it, General. All right, thank you very much for your help. Can I get a copy of the film? Of this film? That, that you took, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, just... There's other stuff on it as well, you see. Well, you know, <laughs> what other stuff? Is it sort of home movies or something? Yeah, no, no, it's other police stuff. Oh, other police stuff, like yeah. not... Not casual wear or whatever. Okay, thank you very much. Do appreciate your help. Thank you. Cheers. Now, last week at the end of the show, we put out a telephone number asking for people to come and help. And loads of people phoned in. Thank you very much. Sorry, we can only get a few of you. Um, but loads of people came along with us. And um, we decided we'll take the battle to an appropriate place. We are today going to visit the, the home of the spooks, the home of the spies, of course the American Embassy, scene of the great Grosvenor Square riots in the 1960s. Um, unfortunately Channel 4 haven't given us permission to orchestrate that again. But we're doing our best. What we'll be doing is we're going to be driving round, we'll be spying on the American Embassy. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive the bus round and round, we'll be dropping people off. Um, so when you get off, look furtive. Hello there. What's going on? Uh, Mark Thomas, Channel 4. Uh, we've, we've, we're filming. Right. Outside here? Yes. Hold it there just for a sec, because 
just after we had that conversation with the police force, she came and said, right, you've got to get off this bit here. We want you filming over there. Want, this is the bit of the American embassy. That's the highway. I want you on that bit there. I said, well, what's the problem? Because, you know, this is, this is a public highway. If I'm on the public highway, as long as I'm moving and not causing an obstruction or disturbance of the peace, then I'm perfectly legal to be here. The people are assembled in three different groups. There's three people in each group, and under the Criminal Justice Act, it doesn't contravene any laws of assembly whatsoever. <laughs> And she said, you've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> We're just making sure that no one's an illegal assembly. Right, right so when the bus comes you've round... You've done this before, have you? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> once or twice. Right. We'll have three over on the corner. Can we have you three on the corner? Yep. Yeah? But just keep an eye on things if anything kicks off. All right. Who's that up there? Point the camera at me. Who's that? Oh, they've gone away now. <laughs> Can I ask what you're doing here? Uh, we're just filming. Filming? Yeah, we've, we've got permission from the, uh, from the embassy, which you cleared it with the press office. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask what, what, what your interest is there? Uh, I'm the press officer. Oh, excellent. And you would have got the, the message. Was it you who took the call? We had no, no. it was a lady who took no. the call. Mm -hmm. so. Generally, we ask people film from across the street. Right. If you wouldn't mind. OK, is there any reason for that? Just uh, the way we like to do it. Just keep the street clear. Keep the sound clear. OK? OK. Appreciate your help. We, we, might, we might not. I have to tell you that. I don't want to sort of, you know, muck your band. You, you work in the press office, don't you? Yeah, but I'm not interested in talking to you on camera, so turn that off, please. All right, can we get everyone back on? All right. Where the bollards are, the anti-tank bollards, um, <laughs> that, that, that's their line. And this bloke came along, this completely, you'll verify this. The bloke came along and said, could you just move back, please? And we said, we were on the public highway. He goes, no, no, no. The embassy ends there. <laughs> I said, I thought it was a bollard. And he goes, no, it's here. He <laughs> just points out to a crack in the pavement. <laughs> he did do that, didn't he? He did. He just said, it's there. So he said, right, so if we step over that, we'll be on American soil. He said, yeah. And I said, I oh, know, it's a fucker when you get people coming on your own country and intruding, isn't it? <laughs> We kind of think, where, where else can we take this? Where, how much further can we take it? And we found out that the Americans and the British have been rather lax in one area. <laughs> the name Menworth Hill hasn't been registered as a domain name on the internet. <laughs> it is now ours. <laughs> in fact, it is more than ours because we've set up a website. Now, let me just get... Hang on, I'm going to show you this. If we could go over and show people this, the, the site on the screen, we'll be able to see... There we are, Menworth Hill Tours. <laughs> That's us. Um, there's a little section there, which is quite interesting. Attractions. Oh, well, there's me getting nicked, which is obviously an attraction. <laughs> and, uh, there's, there's, you can book now, how to book, and there's also a little links line, which kind of links up with all the relevant sort of like websites on the net that's got details about Privacy International, spying, Menworth Hill, all that kind of stuff. There's a, there's a, there's a section there where you can register if you want to come on the Menworth Hill balloon tours, because we are going ahead with it. <laughs> and what we hope is about 500... When we've got 500 people... Come this summer, we're going over. <laughs> and we're going over big. <laughs> we want to get 20 balloons in the air at any time. And you know those novelty balloons? I want Bertie Bassett over men worth hell. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we, we're prepared to make a, a, a pact with the Americans. And we've actually faxed the Pentagon, we've faxed the White House, and we've faxed the US Embassy. And we've offered to sell them the Menworth Hill domain name. We're prepared to sell it to... And it's a snip at half a million. <laughs> We're going to sell it to the Americans for half a million quid, but all the money isn't going to come to us. It's going to go to organisations um, such as the Iraqi support groups, um, <laughs> such as Privacy International, an index on censorship. Although we are going to keep a little bit of money. I will play fair about this. Because you know you can get balloons made in sort of nearly any shape you want. 
I just want to see the Americans' faces when a 150-foot Saddam Hussein head goes over <laughs> men worth here. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the last bit of the, the, the last story, which is, a, which is a slightly weird one. If you don't own a sort of BT phone line, you'll use ca another cable company. And um, if you use another cable company, when you dial 999, it will go through a call centre. Now, most of the call centres... Uh, on the cable companies in Britain are run through a group called XL Multimedia who are part of cable and wireless and an American firm. And a little while ago things started going weird with them because people started dialing up 999 and quite often when you dial up 999 obviously you're not in a position to sort of like leave all the details. One of the examples that I had was the woman screaming help help police police a kid in the background crying and an enraged man smashing something. The phone goes dead. The only uh, thing that I'm left with is the telephone number. I then punch the telephone number into the database on the assumption that the relevant address is going to come through so I can contact the uh, police immediately and nothing comes up. So I then have to phone up billing for the individual cable phone, retrieve the address off them and then get back to the police. Now, I mean, that's minutes ticking away and in mm. circumstances like that, uh, there, there, there isn't really minutes to spare. And they were dropping in November 200 999 calls a day. Now you can imagine that's fairly scary. Now the 999 service is non-profit making. It's a service, it's there, boom, they have to do it. They don't have the information. So they have to go to their backup source of information to get the addresses. Because people move, they change house or whatever. So they go to the backup service, which is the billing department for the phone company, who strangely enough do have the correct addresses. As far as I can see, the, uh, the cable companies were much more concerned with director inquiries, which is where their profits are being made, rather than fulfilling their statutory rights when it comes to emergency calls. They just cu they're cutting corners that, to increase their profits. We've been in contact with some people who work at the 99 call centres, and we asked them just to monitor how many calls were being dropped, because they said, no, we've improved it. The, the quote, I think, is the customers can have absolute certainty in the service. We've improved it all. It happened last year, we've improved it. So we asked the call centre, the people who work there, just monitor how many roughly get dropped. It's coming through at roughly 50 a day still. And that was last week. So we thought we need to do something about this. Now obviously if you phone up the operator or you phone up um, you know, the, the, the emergency service and say, look, we need to give you, make sure that you've got my proper name and address, then you block up the service. But... We have got the fax number for XL Multimedia's headquarters in America, which will come up at the end of the show. And I'd like to ask everybody to fax them in with their name, phone number and address, just to make sure that it's on the database, just to make sure that they've got the information. If you're, if you're an American spy station, you can have the most advanced technology in the world. You know, you can tap into a hundred thousand phone lines at that. But if you're on the wrong cable, you don't fucking count. Thanks for coming, kids. Night-night. No, no.